Hello friends, this video on squares and square roots part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 4. Using the given pattern, find the missing numbers. So if you look at this pattern, you have some gaps at certain places. Like you have a gap here, you have a gap here, you have a gap here and also a gap here. So you need to fill these gaps. So here, if we observe it carefully, we would see some pattern. So let's observe the pattern. So what do we see here? 1 square plus 2 square plus 2 square is 3 square. Then 2 square plus 3 square plus 6 square is 7 square and so on. So looking at this pattern, what are the observations that we make? So we make few observations. The first observation is that the second term is one more than the first term, like the number in the second term. So here if the number is 2, here it is 1. If the number is 3, here it is 2. So basically the second term is just one more than the first term. So if the first term is 2, second term is one more than the first term, that is 3. If the first term is 3, the second term is 4. So this is one thing that we observe. The second observation is that fourth term is one more than the third term. This is our fourth term. Okay, let's call this as the first term, second term, third term and fourth term. So just so that the explanation becomes easier. So you see the fourth term's number is also one more than this third term. Here it is two. So that if the third term is two, the fourth term is three. One more than two. Similarly, if the third term is six, fourth term is seven. If the third term is twelve, fourth term is 13. So this is our second observation. So with this second observation, we can quickly fill this gap. So if this is 21, this will be one less than 21. So this should be 20. So we have already filled one. Perfect. Okay. Let's move on to our third observation. Okay, with our first observation that the second term is one more than the first term, we could have filled this. So if this is 3, this is 4. This is 4, this is 5. This is 5, this is 6. Right? Okay, now what is our third observation? So our third observation is that the third term is, look at the third term. So the third term is n times the first term. Like you, you look at the first row. Here if this is 1, what is the third term? Third term is twice of the first term. Let's look at the second row. Here, the third term is three times the first term. So like for the first case, if you see, this term is two times the first term. In the second row, this term is three times the first term. In the third row, this term is fourth time the first term. So basically, with each row, you see, this is increasing. Like in the first row, one multiplied by two gives you two, which is the third term. In the second row, two multiplied by three gives you six, which is the third term. In the third row, three multiplied by four gives you 12, which is the third term. So in this case, four multiplied by five, because this value is also increasing with each row. So four multiplied by five is 20. So that's how also you see whatever we wrote 20, that is correct. So here it should be multiplied by 6. So 6 into 5, 30. So you see third term is 30. So now with this we will be able to fill our last blanks. So this time you will multiply by 7. So 7 into 6 would be 42. So this term would be 42. So now if this term is 42, what would be this term? So as per our second assumption that the fourth term is one more than the third term. So this would be 43. So here overall we made three different observations. So first observation was second term is one more than first term. Second observation was third term is one more than the second term. Fourth term is one more than the third term. And the third observation once the third term is n times the first term where n's value is increasing from 2 gradually at each row. So when we say first term, second term, we are not talking about the overall value of the first, second or third term. We are just talking about the base of the first, second and third term respectively. Question number five. Without adding, find the sum. Okay. So what is the, what are the set of numbers that is given here? We see that these are set of some odd terms, odd numbers. Now when you observe more closely, you see that these are the odd numbers 
the consecutive odd numbers starting from 1. So how many odd numbers do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So therefore the number of odd numbers that we have is 10. So the sum of n odd numbers is always given by n square. So n square would be 10 square that is 10 into 10 which is 100. So the sum would be 100. So even though we didn't perform actual addition but we could find the sum of these numbers. Question number 6. Express 121 as the sum of 11 odd numbers. So when you look at 121, so 121 is nothing but 11 square. So 11 here is n. So n square. That means the sum of first 11 odd numbers. So which would be the first 11 odd numbers? So let's start from 1. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21. So these are the first 11 odd numbers. So 121 can be expressed as a sum of the first 11 odd numbers. Question number 7. How many numbers lie between squares of 25 and 26? So what is, so square of 25 and square of 26. Now it is extremely tedious to find out the actual value of 25 square and 26 square and we really do not need to do that also. What we have learned is between two, between the squares of two consecutive numbers, there exists many non-perfect squares. So there will exist many such numbers which are not perfect squares between 25 square and 26 squares and there are some specific number of such numbers existing between two consecutive squares. So how many numbers exist? So we have learned that between two numbers, between squares of two numbers n and n plus 1, how many non-perfect squares will exist? 2n number of non-perfect squares will exist. So 2n number of, so what is the value of n here? So n here is 25. So in this case n is 25 and n plus 1 is 26. So that means between squares of 25 and 26, how many perfect squares will exist? 2n number of perfect squares. That is 2 into 25 which is 50. So 50 numbers lie between the squares of 25 and 26. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.